Good day and welcome to section 1.4, Solving Absolute Value Equations. And we are going to start off the day with our vocab word, absolute value. And an absolute value is a distance, keyword distance, from zero on a number line. Now if we go back to the word distance, can we have a negative distance? If we go from Janesville to Mankato, which is a distance of 20 miles, is Mankato to Janesville a negative distance? I hope you said no, so that leads us into our first example where we have to evaluate the absolute value of 4x plus 3 minus 3.5 if x is negative 2. Well, first thing when we do, we have to plug this negative 2 in for that x. So let's go ahead. Now here, these are the absolute values. They're not 1s. Those are absolute values. So let's go ahead and plug in that 2. So from my problem, I have the absolute value of 4. Then I'm going to put in a negative 2 plus 3, all from my problem, absolute value, minus 3.5. Let's continue with this. Here we have negative 8 plus 3 minus 3.5. Continue solving what's in the absolute value or simplifying what's in the absolute value. Now, remember what we said about distance? Can we have a negative distance? Can we have a negative absolute value? We cannot have a negative distance because Janesville from Mankato is the same distance as Mankato from Janesville. So let's take this negative 5 and make it a positive 5 when it comes out of the absolute value, minus 3.5. And then that gives us 1.5 for your answer. Let's try one more. Number 2, again, if x equals 4, so we're going to take this 4 and plug it into x. So now again we go 2.7 plus, again that's an absolute value, it is not a 1, minus 2 times, then what goes in for that x? It's going to be 4, and then you close up your parenthesis and then you add that absolute value. So now it's 2.7 plus, doing what's inside the absolute value first, treat it just like parentheses. What comes first, subtraction or multiplication? Multiplication comes first. So we are subtracting 8. Then it is 2.7 plus the absolute value of a negative 2. Then it's 2.7 plus, and remember the absolute value of a negative is positive, so it's going to be plus 2, and that gives us 4.7. Let's move on to something else. Now we're going to solve for our variable that's inside the absolute value. When we are asked to solve, the very first thing we want to do is to get our absolute value all by itself. All right? You could treat whatever is inside the absolute value like a variable x, but for right now, I'm just going to color those blue and call it good. So now how do I get this negative 2 away from this absolute value? Well, it is attached through multiplication, so how do you undo multiplication? You have to divide, so I'm going to divide by negative 2. Now, on the left side, I get to bring down what's inside the absolute value is 3a, and that equals a positive 3. Now, when the absolute value is all by itself, now pay attention, when the absolute value is all by itself, we can have two different kind of answers, or two different types of answers. So the first one I bring out is 3a equals 3. Yes, completely fine, just like you would solve it, any other equation. But the next time I bring it out, I have 3a equals, I'm going to change this to a negative. Right? I, can, I can change this to a negative because what's inside here could equal a negative or a positive. What's inside the absolute value could be a negative or a positive, so I have to account for that being negative. So let's go ahead and keep solving. How do I solve for this? I know a equals 1 because I divide by 3, and then over here I still divide by 3, and now a equals negative 1. Now, this doesn't happen all the time. It's just not one's positive and the other one's negative. That's just a special case in this situation. We'll move forward and you'll see that it's not just going to be a number and then it's opposite. So let's take a peek at number 4. Again, we have the absolute values. We want to get the green bars all by themselves. Well, how do we do that? We have to subtract 8. So when we subtract 8, we are left with the absolute value of 3x 
minus 2 absolute value equals negative 7. All right, well, now we have to make it positive and negative, right? Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. We have an absolute value equaling a negative number. When an absolute value equals a negative number, it is a no solution. Again, I say, when an absolute value equals a negative number, it is no solution because can an absolute value be negative? No, because it measures distance. Absolute values cannot be negative. These, these absolute values, the bars, what's inside the bars cannot be negative. If they're negative inside, they turn to positive, but they cannot equal a negative. They cannot equal a negative. All right, number five. Here we go again. So now we have the absolute value all by itself again. So I'm going to just rewrite the equation. 8 plus y equals 2y minus 3, right? Nothing changes there. But now when you take it out again over here, I go 8 plus y equals, and now you have to make it negative. You have to make it negative, and I'm going to use Christmas colors, green and red, but it's negative 2, or the quantity, negative 2 minus 3. I made what came out negative, right? I'm going to go back to the blue equation first, solve for y. So I subtract 8 from both sides to get y equals 2y minus 11, and then I subtract the 2y back across, so it's going to be negative y equals negative 11, so now y equals 11. Now going back to the red equation, remember we made this negative, so the very first thing we have to do now is to distribute that negative here and there, so it's going to be a negative 2y plus 3. As we keep going, we subtract the 8 over, so it's going to be y equals negative 2y minus 5, because I subtracted it 8, I did not show my work, but this for right now, because we're old enough, is enough for showing your work. So I subtracted that 8, I'm going to add the 2y back over, so it's 3y equals negative 5. Now you divide by 3, so y equals negative 5 thirds. So here we have two answers that are not opposite of each other. We have y equals negative 5 thirds and y equals 11 for our two answers. Let's try another one with number 6. The very first thing we have to do is to get our absolute value by itself. Is it by itself? It is not. So how do we get it by itself? Well, I have to add the x over. So I add the x over to the other side to get the 2 times the absolute value of x plus 1 equals 4x minus 4. Now, is there something still attached to the absolute value? Yes, there is. What do we have to do with it? We have to divide it out. So I divide it by 2 on this side, divide by 2 on that side to come up with the absolute value of x plus 1 equals 2x minus 2. Now, here we go again. We have the absolute value equals something. So when we take it out, x plus 1 equals 2x minus 2 for 1. But please remember, please remember that an absolute value has to have a positive here and a negative over here. So re remember to include that you set it equal to a negative. So I'm, now I'm going to start with the negative one first. I'm going to start with the blue one first. So distribute the negative to go x plus 1 equals negative 2x plus 2. Continuing, now I'm going to move the 1 over. So it's x equals negative 2x plus 1. Moving the 2x over here, it's now 3x equals 1. Solving for x, I divide by 3, so x equals 1 third. Now moving to the red equation. I'm going to subtract my 1 over, so it's x equals 2x minus 3. Subtract my 2x over, so it's negative x equals negative 3. I have to divide out that negative 1, so x equals, x equals a positive 3. Notice again, take note that x equals 3 and x equals 1 third. They are not opposite numbers. They are not... Uh, 
positive, negative. They both may be negative. They both may be positive, right? But they're not always going to be the same number with different signs. Let's try one more. Hang in there. So now again, we have the absolute value. So what we have to do is get everything away from the absolute value. We do that by adding the 2x to the other side. All right, we save multiplication and division to the very end. So I bring everything else down. And I'm going to change this 2 to a 3 because I accidentally wrote the wrong thing. Now what is attached to the absolute value? A 3, so I have to divide it out. So when you divide it out, you have to divide by everything on the other side. So it's now going to be the absolute value of 2x plus 2 equals x plus 1 because this 3 goes here and the 3 goes there. So now, when we solve this again, it's 2x plus 2 out of the absolute value equals x plus 1. That is one, only one solution. Now it comes over here. We have 2x plus 2. Now it has to equal what? It has to equal a negative x plus 1. Starting with the black equation. I'm going to, ah, just to mix it up, I'm going to bring this x over here. So it's x plus 2 equals 1. Moving the 2 to the other side, x equals a negative 1. There's one answer. Moving to the blue equation. I first have to distribute that negative to make it negative x minus 1. Now I'm moving the 2 over, so it's going to be 2x equals a negative x minus 3. Moving the x back over, 3x equals negative 3. Divide by 3x equals negative 1. Well, looky here. Now, instead of having two answers, we just have x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 1. There is just one x and there is just one negative 1. So our answer is going to be x equals negative 1. And that does it for section 1.4, solving absolute value equations. Good day.